cyrodopamine here. The ROG ally is nine freaking months old. Time flies. It's crazy. You know, the Legion Go came out, the Steam Deck OLED came out. I've been on those bad boys, but I've, a couple of weeks ago, I started going back into this and I've been playing it full time since. And it's crazy how much this device has changed over the few months. Um, I'll show you, but I will say Asus has done a great job at fine tuning the ROG ally. It feels like it is what it's supposed to be instead of like, you know, like the Legion Go had that computer glitchy problem where it just didn't feel like a handheld. It didn't always feel like a smooth gaming experience. This you can tell is meant for it and it's been fine tuned and the guys at ACs kind of knew what to do and what not to do over these last few updates. So all, all this good, bad, good, bad, you know, things like that. Um, the first amazing thing about this ROG Ally after coming back from the Steam Deck OLED and the Legion Go is the audio quality. It's incredible. It's the best you're going to get in this industry. Um, you know, the MacBook Pro or maybe even it's almost like headphones where, you know, the sound just kind of like wraps around your head. You almost get that surround sound experience when the speakers are shooting at you from this tiny device and the low frequencies are great. The mids and the highs, they sound phenomenal. As you, if you've seen my Legion Go video, you know dang well that the speaker quality is not there. And coming from that to this is just, oh my gosh, it's amazing. And then I'll also add real quick, audio really, really helps with the immersion. In fact, it, I'd say it's like 40% of like that feeling like you're there in the game that you're playing. Bad audio ruins your experience. It, it just, you get it. But anyways, let's talk about the screen. Now here's a hard thing that I've had to cope with when coming from a Legion Go. And sometimes even, you know, the Steam Deck OLED is the display on this thing. I can't complain, right? It's 1080p. It's sharp, it's crisp. For the size of this device, it's perfect. You don't want, you don't need anything more um, in regards to resolution. But yeah, it doesn't have OLED and um, it's not as big as the Legion Go. But what this screen has is a variable refresh rate and that is a night and day difference when it comes to gaming um, it makes everything far more smoother than it actually is it tricks your eyes in a way so like for example the legion go as i mentioned you can see a ton of performance fluctuation um, like frame drops you know you walk outside into the open world map and you can feel your your legion go chug a little bit and then there's a difference in performance this you can you get that same chugging effect where it like drastically drops but it doesn't hit as hard as you know again the legion go um, and steam deck oled as well to an extent steam deck oled's found their way of doing it too but here's the biggest thing whenever i want to play a first person shooter game I, I always run to the rog ally this is my guy this is my partner for the first person shooter games okay because it feels so smooth and it's so responsive and I'll get to this in a minute, but performance is oddly way better than um, the Legion Go. But let me tell you something that is not good with this thing after all this use. And it is the freaking battery. I mean, again, what do you expect? It's a Windows handheld, right? We can't expect that flawless Steam Deck or Nintendo Switch like experience with battery. Um, and you can't expect yourself to play this off of a charger for more than an hour. You know, most of the time I'm in turbo mode, I'm not gonna lie, but you know, I, it's kind of hard to be like in performance mode at 15 watts because I could just get those extra frames, you know? But for me, I get really hyper-focused on the game I'm playing, consumed in it. And so I always play this unplugged in fear that the 20% is gonna pop up and it's gonna kick me out of my hyper-focus and it kind of messes with me a little bit. Um, I always mention this, it's like a, it's like an ADHD thing, but if you're disciplined and you're, um, I don't know, you're, you're, you're not, you're not crazy. Now here, here's the weird thing. After coming back to this ROG ally, this topic has completely changed and I don't know how it's happening because it's almost too good to be true. And that is the performance. This thing performs the best in my experience, out of all the other handhelds that I have, I am getting 90 to 100 frames on 
Dying Light 2 medium settings, whereas on the Legion Go, I'm getting, you know, 60. Um, the finals, I'm breaking 100 FPS. I'm going over that. And then, like, the average is, like, 70. When with the Legion Go, I'm getting, you know, 60. Um, this thing just performs like a champ. And I have full confidence that I can perform my best in whatever game I'm playing on this device. There are no stutters and when there are it's very minimal because again with the variable refresh rate you know starfield runs smooth as butter like all these games are just so smooth on this device and that's priceless that's what we want um most of the time right and you know in regards to performance you know the other topic is like compatibility whatever game you want to play or whatever game you're looking forward to whether it be dragon's dogma 2 this is a stretch but grand theft auto 6 I'm pretty confident you're going to be able to play it on this and not have much of an issue. Um, it's future proof. It's just so well optimized and it feels so like built and fine tuned for the best performance. It's just so satisfying. Now, another great thing I want to talk about is controls. The controllers on this device are extremely reliable. I've, I'll get to build quality in a second because that's huge, but um, I love how it's not overcomplicating things with its controllers. Like for example, the Legion Go has all these buttons that I've never used once and you're clicking them and they're fidgeting on the controllers and it's kind of like, it's a little bit in your face, you know what I mean? This thing is, it just does what it, I don't like, these two back buttons are perfect. You don't need more. And, and they've added some updates with the controllers where you can adjust the dead zone, right? And there's, you know, and, AMD's new latency thing and then you've got my favorite for first person games is like I can choose to aim down my sights and use gyro and what I'll do is I'll bump up the gyro sensitivity to super super high so it's very sensitive I end up playing better than I do on a mouse and keyboard crazy I love these controls and they're set up to where it's like convenient to press everything you don't have to go out of your way now this is like the biggest thing that I really wanted to talk about with this ROG Ally, and it is the build quality. So one of my, my best friend, uh, James Sell, um, we grew up together. Anyways, he's a very well-known content creator, and he's, you know, for a video he did, he pulled a prank on me. He bought another ROG Ally, pretended that it was mine, and he threw it off the rooftop. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's crazy emotional whirlwind, but we went down there, you know, and the fact that the ROG allies stayed intact, blew my mind. Obviously it's broken, right? Um, of course, what can you expect from a four story roof? But it was still fixable, okay? That's crazy, the screen wasn't broken, some buttons flew out, but everything aside from that remained intact. And that is awesome. This thing, my one that he didn't drop, I have dropped. Um, it just fell off my bed yesterday. It, I've dropped it maybe three or four times and I have scratch, you know, rings that scratch into it. And I'm not, I don't carry it in a case. You know, when I travel, I don't, I just throw it in my bag. I literally like throw it in there because I'm so confident that this thing will handle the durability test far more than the Steam Deck OLED and the Legion Go. This thing is built like a tank and I love that. I mean, I'll look at the close up. You can see how dirty it is. I refuse to clean it for this video because I want to show you like real, real world testing, you know? This thing has been through hell and back and is still ready to present itself at its finest. And I love that. Now, how has the experience been coming from the Steam Deck OLED, coming from the Legion Go, um, just as a handheld in general? This is what I'll tell you. Asus knows how to make a handheld and it is, I love the form factor. It's tight, it's compact, it's like a sports car. You know, you know, you can drive a minivan on a road and turn and there's kind of like delay and sway from the weight distribution. This is like a Porsche 911. When you turn, it's sensitive and it's like tight and it doesn't sway and it just feels like a fine-tuned sports car. It's crazy. And I love the size. I love just how it feels in the hand. This is a handheld done right. 
especially after these updates. If you're looking to buy one, you're not going to regret it. Um, and even, you know, with this Legion Go having a bigger screen, I see your point of view of like, you know, it's, I might regret not having a bigger screen. I'll tell you this, you get used to what you have. And um, obviously a bigger screen sounds better, but you, you lack that like tight feeling of having a durable, portable, reliable, powerful handheld. So this original ROG Ally, so this ROG Ally has sold between 70 and 80,000 units in India alone, okay? And that's according to ASUS's vice president in that region. And he actually kind of dropped some stuff. He said that the, uh, he confirmed that they're working on a ROG Ally too. And um, it's at the end of this year that we should see it, right? So here's some like rumors and here's what we, we are suspecting might be on this thing. Um, obviously a larger display. I wouldn't say it's a larger form factor. I would assume that they just kind of get rid of the bezels a little bit, right? That would be awesome. Um, some talks are of it using an OLED. And of course, with an OLED, you kind of lose some of those other screen features like uh, variable refresh rate. Um, more powerful components, such as 32 gigabytes of RAM and whatever new AMD chips are coming out by then with dual USB-C ports. That is convenient. I'll show you why on my next video. Um, and then this is a huge one, a potential to connect an external GPU that isn't necessarily exclusive to ASUS's GPUs, right? Um, I still think this is a phenomenal idea. Anyways, I thought I'd whip this one up real quick. Um, I'm not gonna ask you to subscribe. Uh, just If it's your vibe, this is your stuff, you know. Um, but tell me what I can do to make these videos better. You know what I mean? I want to grow this. Um, and also, hey guys, whatever videos you want, drop it in. Whatever gets the most votes and things like that, I'll do it. This is for you guys.